OpenAI just dropped GPT-4.1, a non-reasoning multimodal model that has a context length of up to 1 million tokens, which is a length that OpenAI has never offered before. Slightly different to GPT-4.5, which they released a few weeks ago, this GPT-4.1 model is specifically tailored for developers, with the key features being its high performance on coding benchmarks like Software Engineering Benchmark Verified, which is a Python-focused benchmark, setting at 55%, which is the current best in the model lineups that OpenAI offers, an Aiders Polyglot benchmark that tests the model skills at writing and editing code sitting at 53%, which is in the ninth place overall and third for a non-reasoning model. But I think the most unique feature it has is this reverse naming strategy that is rolling back 0.4 GPT version. My guess in why they are doing this is because they overhyped GPT-5 too much, or else it would probably be in something like GPT-4.6. And when I said tailored for devs, it's literally only available through API right now, which doesn't sound that bad for devs, but if you look closely, Mostly, this means you can access it through ChatGPT even if you pay for the $200 subscription. Hopefully, they would add it back in down the line. And before I dive deeper into GPT-4.1's performance, with coding becoming the essential language of innovation and the traditional learning curve being pretty steep, leveraging AI chatbots would be the next big step for improving your skills in 2025 and beyond. That's why I would like to share with you this free resource from HubSpot created in partnership with data scientist Sandas Khalid called Learn to Code with ChatGPT. This is a practical guide that explains how to harness chatbots like ChatGPT as your personal programming mentor and show you how to integrate it effectively into your learning process. It's loaded with real-world insights designed to help aspiring developers and those looking to level up, from learning strategies for balancing AI guidance with essential independent problem solving, discover tips for using AI chatbots to enhance your understanding of key programming concepts, and master techniques for creating and adjusting your personalized coding learning plan to fit your pace and goals. The resource is packed with actionable advice and frameworks to make AI work for your coding journey. And the best part is, you can download it completely for free right now. So if you're ready to dive into coding or boost your existing skills with the power of AI, check it out using the link down in the description, and thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Anyways, this GPT-4.1 release has three different model sizes, GPT-4.1, GPT-4.1 Mini, and GPT-4.1 Nano, with the pricing starting at $2 per 1 million input tokens and $8 per 1 million output tokens for GPT-4.1, 40 cents in and $1.6 out for mini and 10 cents in and 40 cents out for nano. The cash price here basically means if you are reusing the KV cash aka the same context window again and again, the pricing will be a lot cheaper. So this is probably the cheapest high performance model that OpenAI has ever released. With that being said, let's compare it with other models that is not from OpenAI. If you look at DeepSeek V30324 which is the latest version, their performance is higher than GPT 4.1 on Aether Bench and they are 7 5 times cheaper than 4.1. Not to mention, DeepSeek has a discount price during off-peak hours, which gives another 50% off. And it's an open source model. But GPT 4.1 does offer multimodal inputs like images or videos. On top of that, GPT 4.1 does have a 1 million context window, which is 16 times more than DeepSeek. But for GPT 4.1's price point, you might as well pay for the current best model, Gemini 2.5 Pro. Not only does it offer $1.25 per 1 million input when you have less than 200k tokens and $10 per 1 million output tokens, its performance is just state of the art across the board. The only few downsides of Gemini 2.5 Pro is that it is very slow, it's a reasoning model which makes the API cost more expensive, and it is slightly more expensive when you cross 200k tokens in a single context. So the key feature of GPT 4.1 really is its cheaper price offers a 1 million context window and faster token output speed for 1 million context window as it is a non reasoning model, or at least a statistical and benchmark wise. But what makes it harder for me to talk about GPT 4.1 is that even though they have made a completely new long context benchmark called MRCR and has published it on to Hugging Face for people to use, they did not officially compare it to other models, especially Gemini, which is the leading model series that offers 1 million context window. If OpenAI is not sharing it, it probably means Gemini 2.5 Pro's 1 million context window retrieval is still better than GPT 4.1. And if you look at MRCR, GPT 4.1 4.1 was only able to hit around 50% accuracy between 100k tokens to 1 million tokens. And if you look at my favorite long context benchmark, Fiction Life Bench, it also hit around 60% at 120k tokens, with Gemini 2.5 Pro capable of hitting a staggering 90%. So Gemini 2.5 Pro is still the king in that aspect. And I promise my Gemini 2.5 video is coming soon. I was just interrupted by Llama4 and now GPT 4.1. So how about its multimodal performance? Well, on Math Vista, which 
which is the visual benchmark for math questions, it has a score of 72%. On OpenAI's official benchmark, you can't really tell how good that truly is. But looking at the official Math Vista leaderboard, that makes it sit below Llama for Maverick and around Gemini 2.0 Flash. So it's not that crazy of a performance in the case of math. But for a more general visual problem solving, it has a 75% accuracy on MMMU, which is the third highest after 01 High and Llama for Behemoth. So Llama 4 series vision are actually really good. I mean, this is excluding the new Kimi K1.6 model that would probably be the actual third place. So overall, I think this is a really solid model release with cheaper pricing, multi-model, and better performance. Definitely a direction that OpenAI is now focusing on. It's just that there are a lot of models which are just better in some unique aspects, which make GPT 4.1 look less impressive than it is. But the most shocking news of this GPT 4.1 announcement is that they are deprecating GPT 4.5. The official reason they provided was that they want to free up some GPUs dedicated to serving GPT 4.5, and by looking at GPT 4.5's API price, it is 37 times more expensive than GPT 4.1. So it might be a giant model, with people speculating that 4.5 is very likely a failed run for GPT 5. This expensive cost and the lack of strong use case might be why they are deprecating it along with the release of GPT 4.1. With the amount of trash I talked about GPT 4.5 in my last video, I'm not gonna lie, I've started to like its creative writings. But other than that, it is actually really underwhelming. So for the people that likes the chatbot capabilities it has, that part will probably stay as it is only getting deprecated in the API right away with the chat GPT version being kept. Seeing them deprecating the API right away might just suggest no one was using a model with that crazy price. Anyways, I'll come back and make a video again on GPT 4.1 if I find it interesting as I code more with it. Definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comments too. And if you like to follow the cutting edge of AI, you should check out my newsletter where I cover the latest in the juiciest AI research weekly. On there, I will be covering three of the top AI research from the previous week that I don't have the time to make into videos. So if that's right down your alley, definitely go check it out. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Degan, News Research, Kanan, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shaner, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, Poof and Inu, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.